So I want to go through some of these allegations. Then I want to go through some of the left-wing fact checks of the documentary, which I find pretty non-compelling. And then I want to ask a few questions. So the 2000 Mules documentary, which again, I think that if you have interest in this sort of stuff, you definitely should watch it because it'll allow you to, to kind of examine the claims that I'm going to make about the documentary as to what I think is compelling and what I think is not quite as compelling. So let's start with the, the first clip about using geolocating. Okay, so the, the claim here is that they used geolocation data, right? Your cell phone can track you, basically. And you can use geolocation data to see where people went on particular dates. They gathered trillions, trillions of pieces of data about where people were from advertisers. And then they were able to basically track people's cell phones. And what they could see is that there were a lot of people who were going, apparently, between unspecified nonprofit groups, presumably the groups that were actually doing the ballot harvesting, and then to multiple drop boxes, right? Going to 20, 30 drop boxes, which is super suspicious, right? It does look like you are now trying to essentially perform ballot trafficking or ballot harvesting. There's no reason. If I'm, if I'm going to drop off my family's ballots at a drop box, I ain't going to 20 drop boxes. And the idea here is that the reason that they're doing it this way, as opposed to just dropping 200 ballots in a drop box, the reason that they're actually doing this is because they wish to avoid the, the view of the authorities. And so they are going to these, these drop boxes and dropping four or five ballots off at a time. And they're doing this hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of times. So here is Catherine Engelbrecht discussing what exactly geolocating was used to do here. These techniques are used every single day by law enforcement. Across the country, we buy 10 trillion signals. So what was the criterion that you set? Final decision was they had to have been to 10 or more drop boxes, meaning unique visits inside of a space, and five or more visits to one, of the, one or more of these organizations. Let's identify a large number of drop boxes and multiple trips, and that way we're going to catch not all the offenders, right? But the worst offenders. Okay, so the basic idea was that they, they drew kind of boxes around the drop boxes, and then they drew boxes around these nonprofits, and they could see how people were moving. This is the claim with regard to geolocating. Now, as I'm going to say in a second, I'm not an expert on geolocation, so I don't know, you know how specific geolocation is. My understanding is very, very specific, right? at least specific enough to tell whether people went by the drop boxes whether they stopped at the Dropbox or whether they stopped at the nonprofit or whether they were just driving by is a different story. But if you can see a pattern of travel that shows people and the only path that they are taking that day, right? It's not like they're just driving around the city and they happen to pass these things. They're going to every Dropbox and they're driving past every Dropbox. That looks really, really suspicious. Okay, so they actually do this at one point in 2000 Mules. They actually show a mule's movement through what they call these people mules, like drug mules, because they're ballot mules, supposedly. This is in Atlanta. What you see here on the screen is a single person on a single day in Atlanta, Georgia. They went to 28 drop boxes in five organizations in one day. What are the orange dots? Those are drop boxes. That's super suspicious, obviously. If you have one person who's stopping at 30 drop boxes, that's really, really, really suspicious. And then they make claims that there are tons of people who are doing this in, for example, Philadelphia. There, there are lots of people in Philadelphia who are doing this. They say literally over a thousand people who are doing this in Philadelphia. Philadelphia alone, we've identified more than 1,100 mules at rates well beyond anything we'd seen. Closer to 50 drop boxes each. Okay, so they're saying that all these people were stopping at dozens and dozens and dozens of drop boxes. Now, the truth is that Trump actually did better in Philadelphia than he did in 2016. It was Philadelphia's suburbs that turned Pennsylvania in favor of Joe Biden. Okay, so those those are the basic, the, the, the main line claim that they make is that the number of mules who are carrying these ballots and then dropping off the ballots, they do some basic math and they suggest that basically the margin of victory in every single swing state is due to, to these quote unquote mules. Here's what they suggest. Georgia, 250 mules, averaging 24 drop box visits and five illegal ballots per drop. That's 30,000 illegally trafficked votes, far more than the 12,000 vote difference between Trump and Biden. So Georgia, with 16 electoral votes, moves over into the Trump column. In Arizona, the numbers are roughly the same. 
200 mules, averaging 20 drop box visits and five illegal ballots per drop. That's 20,000 illegal votes. Again, these illegal votes are substantially more than the 10,000 vote margin that gave the state's 11 electoral votes to Biden. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania alone, 1,100 mules, averaging 50 drop box visits and five ballots per visit. That's 275,000 illegal votes, again, comfortably exceeding the 80,000 vote margin between Trump and Biden. So Pennsylvania's 20 electoral votes goes for Trump. Okay, so the the supposition now is being extended. So this is my problem with the documentary. I think that there are dots they're not filling in. You can question all the ballot harvesting. You can take for granted that all the geolocation data that they're using is actually true. As we'll see, many of the fact checkers don't. I have doubts about how the fact checkers are doing this. That does not mean that all of those ballots are illegal votes, right? So, so Dinesh calls them illegal votes right there because they are presumably illegally picked up and dropped off. This is the claim that was made in Pennsylvania, by the way, which I think actually had some veracity, which is that the procedures used in Pennsylvania were illegal. That does not mean that these are quote unquote illegal votes, meaning that they were all cast fraudulently or that they are fake or anything like that. Right. So that the, the claims are distinctive and they are. And again, it means rigging in a different way. It leads to the possibility of voter fraud, but it is not proof of actual voter fraud. It is proof of really, really bad and, and possibly fraudulent voter procedures. Not quite the same thing. OK, so now I want to go through the actual fact checks. There are two major fact checks that were done of 2,000 mules, that of which I'm aware. One was from PolitiFact and one was from the Associated Press. The one from the Associated Press has gotten more play. So here is what the reporter for the Associated Press, Ali Swenson, says, quote, This is based on faulty assumptions, anonymous accounts, and improper analysis of cell phone location data, which is not precise enough to confirm somebody deposited a ballot into a drop box, according to experts. So claim, at least 2,000 mules were paid to illegally collect ballots and deliver them to drop boxes in key swing states ahead of the 2020 presidential election. The fact, true the vote didn't prove this. The finding is based on false assumptions about the precision of cell phone tracking data and the reasons someone might drop off multiple ballots, according to experts. True the Vote has said it found some 2,000 ballot harvesters by purchasing $2 million worth of anonymized cell phone geolocation data, the pings that track a person's location based on app activity in various swing counties across five states. Then, by drawing a virtual boundary around the county's ballot drop box and various unnamed nonprofits, it identified cell phones that repeatedly went near both ahead of the 2020 election. If a cell phone went near a drop box more than 10 times and a nonprofit more than five times from October 1 to Election Day, True the Vote assumed the owner was a mule. It's named for someone engaged in an illegal ballot collection scheme in cahoots with a nonprofit. The group's p- claims of a paid ballot harvesting scheme are supported in the film only by one unidentified whistleblower said to be from San Luis, Arizona, who said she saw people picking up what she assumed to be payments for ballot collection. Experts say cell phone location data, even at its most advanced, can only reliably track a smartphone within a few meters, not close enough to know whether someone actually dropped off a ballot or just walked or drove nearby. So it turns out that like all your cell phone data is not only widely available, that we can track you like wherever you go. Well, probably you should think about not allowing people to do that, which is why you should have a VPN. How did you choose which ISP to use? The sad thing is most of us have pretty much no choice. ISPs operate like monopolies in the regions they serve, and they use that monopoly power to take advantage of their customers. Worst of all, many ISPs log your internet activity and they sell that data to other big tech companies or advertisers, like we're talking about right now, to prevent ISPs from seeing my internet activity, not for purposes of ballot harvesting, but just because, I mean, it's my internet activity, I protect all my devices with ExpressVPN. So, what does ExpressVPN do, you ask? Excellent question. It is a simple app for your computer or smartphone. It encrypts all your network data. It tunnels it through a secure VPN server so your ISP can't see any of your activity. And that's the bottom line. Like, you don't have to know how it works. It just does. Think about how much of your life is on the internet. Sadly, every site you visit, video you watch, message you send is tracked by ISPs and other tech giants. And then they sell that information for profit, which is the reason I recommend ExpressVPN as the best way to hide your online activity from your ISP. Here's the thing. It's really, really simple. So you go on your phone, you open up ExpressVPN, and then here it is. See, But right now it's not connected, which is sad, right? That's not good. But behold, it is connected. It's like magic. And now I'm protected on the internet. And you can be too with ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN does all of that without slowing your connection, which is big for me. So go check out ExpressVPN today. Stop handing over that personal data to ISPs and other tech giants who are going to mine that activity. Protect yourself the same way that I do. Use expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro show. Get three extra months for free. So Aaron Striegel, professor of computer science at University of Notre Dame, said you could use cellular evidence to say this person was in that area. To say they were at the ballot box, you're stretching it a lot. There's always a pretty healthy amount of uncertainty that comes with this. 
Ballot drop boxes are placed in intentionally busy areas, increasing the likelihood innocent citizens got caught in the group's dragnet. Now, True the Vote, for its part, says that they didn't do this. They say that they filtered out people whose pattern of life before the election season included frequenting nonprofit and drop box locations. So in other words, if it were people who were just consistently driving to work past these places like over and over and over, they didn't count them. So they're saying they only counted people whose pattern of life changed from October 1 to, to January to January 1, which is when, uh, or, or the first week of January, which is when uh, the Georgia election for Senate took place. So I think that that claim happens to be kind of weak. And also the government uses cell phone surveillance data all the time in a variety of law enforcement contexts in order to sort of figure out where people are. True the Vote also highlighted Dropbox surveillance footage that showed vid- voters depositing multiple ballots into the boxes. Okay, we're going to get into this in one second because that sort of video is, like, there, again, this is a dot that just is not connected in the documentary. Maybe True the Vote has evidence that, that is more than what was shown in the documentary, but it should have been shown in the documentary if so. Okay, so continuing this fact check, the AP says, in Philadelphia alone, True the Vote identified 1,155 mules who illegally collected and dropped off ballots for money. The facts, the group hasn't offered any evidence of any sort of paid ballot harvesting scheme in Philadelphia. True the Vote did not get surveillance footage of drop boxes in Philadelphia. So they based this on cell phone location data, according to researcher Greg Phillips. That's the guy whose voice you heard earlier. And then the claim that all of this was would have been enough to switch votes in the 2020 election. That ignores the fact that some of these votes would have to be shown to actually be fraudulent. Okay, so that is the AP fact check. Again, I'm sketchy on how the AP is describing cell phone surveillance data. I'm not an expert in this. It seems to me like they're using fungible arguments with cell phone surveillance. Like it's close enough to determine whether you were in contact with somebody else with COVID, but it's not close enough to determine whether you were actually near a Dropbox. And again, True the Vote makes claims that if true, the Associated Press does not rebut. Right? Things like we actually filtered out people who have regular patterns of travel that take them past these drop boxes in non-election circumstances. Okay, PolitiFact does sort of the same thing. So I'm going through the fact checks because, again, I, I want to show that the fact checks, I think, are a little bit scanty. And then I want to talk about my own questions about the documentary and where investigators, if they're serious, should actually look. So the po- Pointer Institute's PolitiFact, a left-wing outlet, right? They, they basically start by just ripping on Dinesh, which is useless. I mean, how about talk about the, the actual claims made by the film? They say, true, the vote didn't respond to our questions. The group's founder, Catherine Engelbrecht, told Newsweek her group obtained geospatial information and ballot drop box surveillance video from counties and cities in Georgia, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. She said her team cross-referenced the two to determine who visited drop box location zones multiple times. D'Souza said on Fox News that the movie identifies 2,000 mules harvesting in total, something like 400,000 illegal votes, more than enough to tip the balance. D'Souza's argument ignores that in many states, it's legal to drop off a ballot on behalf of another voter. Yeah, but it's not legal to drop off 200 ballots on behalf of 200 voters who are not members of your family. In 31 states, someone other than the voter is allowed to return a completed ballot on behalf of another voter, but generally those have to be family members or designated persons. There have been isolated cases of fraud, like a North Carolina Republican in a 2018 congressional race, says PolitiFact, it's possible some people in 2020 collected and returned mail ballots in violation of state laws. D'Souza's portrayal of the practice as leading to fraud on the scale of 400,000 illegal votes is not supported by evidence. In fact, True the Vote told Wisconsin lawmakers they aren't alleging the ballots were illegal, but that the process was abused, right? This is what I'm saying, is that the documentary does not make the claim that I think a lot of people are attributing to the documentary. In other words, the process is corrupt and people are violating the law and how they are moving these ballots. But that does not mean that the ballots are being cast by dead people or that they are being punched by somebody in the back room somewhere. Engelbrecht said, there's no way to know who the votes were cast for. What we do know is the claim that 2020 was the most secure election ever is false, which, again, I think is a fair claim by Engelbrecht. The University of Madison Wisconsin Madison Political Science, Professor Mayer, he says, it's conspiracists thinking they're interpreting data that confirms their pre-existing conclusions. It's a zombie claim, no matter how many times you kill it, it keeps coming back. Well, that, that is not a particularly convincing statement by the professor. And then, and then PolitiFact says, well, you know, if, if such a thing were happening, we probably would know about it by now. Well, that, that is not exactly edifying. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's not a, a really great explanation. So your, your claim is, it didn't happen because if it had happened, we would know about it. But if you had made any claim about this for two years, you were banned from social media. So, yeah, I, I don't think so. True the Vote and the Georgia Republican Party in 2021 made claims about ballot harvesting in Georgia. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation said there wasn't enough evidence to proceed on that allegation. State officials said cell phone data that allegedly showed 279 cell phones tracked multiple times within 100 feet of an absentee drop box was not evidence of a crime. 
So basically they're saying we can't substantiate the crime here. Okay, so this, and, and so apparently True the Vote say that they are going to release more information in the coming weeks. So my first thing that I'm going to say here is I can wait for more information and see what is substantiated. What you need is actual evidence of people going to multiple drop boxes that isn't just the cell phone data moving past the drop boxes. Also, I don't know enough about cell phone data to tell whether there's a major time delay. Is somebody spending five minutes at the drop box and then moving on? Or is it second by second, the cell phone moves past it? Also, if somebody is carrying two cell phones or a pager and a cell phone or a computer and a cell phone, like where is all this data coming from? All these are open questions which require more explanation. So I guess what I would say is an answer that's going to make nobody happy. I think that the data is really interesting. I think that it's really suspicious for sure. I don't think that it's dispositive that this alone shifted the election or that, and when I say this, I mean fraudulent ballots or that the election was stolen in the sense that actual fraudulent ballots made the difference between victory and loss for Donald Trump in these states. I think that the conclusions of the film are not justified by the premises of the film itself. There are a bunch of dots that need to be connected. Maybe they will be connected, but they haven't been connected in the film. And also, I think that the complete dismissal by the left of the allegations made in the film is un unconvincing. So in other words, more information necessary. And I hope that law enforcement does take a more serious look at the cell phone data and at any tape that True the, True the Vote says that they're going to unleash more data here. So let's see more data. That is my basic take on 2000 Mules. And I think that, um, you know, we'll see what more comes out. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our future content.